welcome back aboard Star Wife. We hope you find these videos interesting. During the years that we've owned Star White, we've completely replaced the electrical system. All of the wiring has been removed and replaced. Batteries, panels, and obviously electronic instruments have also been replaced. The original West Sail 28 plan had the electrical panel mounted in the back of this locker at the settee. perfectly functional. However, the back of the electrical panel was then exposed to the engine room and it was also exposed to any outgassing from the batteries, which was not necessarily good for the panel. When we first took possession of Star White, we found that we were experiencing brownouts if we turned on too many lights. Upon doing a little research, I found that this single piece of number 14 wire was the only connection from the master battery switch to the 12 volt panel. The power supply from the master battery switch to our new 12 volt panel now runs through this piece of size 6 wire, eliminating any kind of voltage drops. As we began removing all the original wiring, we came across some creative connections hiding under lots of electrical tape. Star White's onboard 120 volt AC shore power wiring consisted of pieces of an orange extension cord and some solid core household wire. This is our battery bank. Actually, I should say, these are our battery banks. We have uh, a total of four batteries. The three gray North Stars that you see are our house bank. And then the one blue Optima is our engine starting battery. We relocated the master battery switch to the side of the quarter berth area here. We also recessed it slightly. Uh, mounting it from the back rather than top mounting it. By back mounting the battery switch, we were able to hide all of the cabling runs behind the bulkhead rather than having them peeking out on the front side. We began the rewiring process forward in the V-berth first pulling down the old teak headliner and trim so that we could install new tinned copper wiring for overhead lights. All the wiring for interior lighting was done with either 14-2 or 12-2 tinned copper wire. All the terminal blocks and bus bars are also tinned copper. Once the V-berth overhead wires were in place, we began pulling wires to the compression post for our new tricolor steaming foredeck and anchor lights. When we acquired Star White, she had only basic bow and stern running lights and a pair of poorly wired non-functional spreader lights. There was no mast light or any anchor light. We installed a foredeck light and a mast light along with a masthead tricolor and a masthead anchor light. The anchor light and the tricolor are both LED. As a result, the masthead anchor light only draws a tenth of an amp an hour, which has been just great for me because I always seem to forget to turn the anchor light off in the morning. We've installed a lot of lighting throughout Star White. In the quarter berth, we have an overhead light 
It's LED. In fact, all of our interior lighting is LED. Here at the nav station, we've got an under counter light, which makes for a very, very bright working area here at the nav station. Up on the overhead, we've got two large dome lights over the galley area. Again, to try and make things as light and bright as we can. Over on the settee side here, we start out with a reading light in the corner, an overhead light, another overhead light, another reading light in the opposite corner. Up forward here in the V-berth, we've continued the lighting trend. We have an overhead light on each side of the V-berth, and there is also an overhead light down under the deck area of the V-berth. The overhead light that we've got over here on the port side actually switches from white to red. The red is real nice at night. It uh, allows you to maintain your night vision. That one light in the engine room does a reasonably good job of lighting things up. When we were refitting the boat, we removed the panel from here and we relocated it over here to the nav station. Moving the electrical panels to the nav station required building a cabinet to mount them in. In the case of adding a new electrical circuit, for example, a new piece of electronic equipment to the boat, it's a simple manner of removing four small screws that fit in the corner of the electrical panels and then pulling the electrical panel straight out. The new electrical system when we installed it, we went with color-coded wiring, which made it easy to trace a wire, and we installed buses on the back behind the panel here for some of the things that really require a lot of connections, such as the cabin lights over here on the right, or the running lights bus over here on the left. We also put a relatively long tail on all of the wires so that we can pull the panel out and forward and keep it out of the way and also make it much easier to get at when we do want to add something to the panel. Our 120 volt AC system is very basic. We have a master breaker that controls the 120 volt outlets on board and there is a separate breaker for the battery charger. There are three AC outlets in Starwide's cabin. One in the main salon, one at the chart table, and one more up forward in the V-berth. This entire project took hundreds of hours over the course of several months. My labor was free. Materials totaled up to around $6,000. Thanks for watching.